Welcome to Chain Reaction. I'm Tim Vine. My guest is quite simply a comedy legend, one of the greatest comics this country has ever produced, if not the world. And he's still making people fall off their chairs with laughter in his 90th year. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honour to say, Sir Ken Dodd! <laughs> Who are these people? <laughs> Where did you get... Surely the job centres are closed now. <laughs> I, is it uh, A&E or...? or... <laughs> now, I called you Sir, Sir Ken that you've just become a Knight of the Realm this year. Yes, it's, indeed. Yes. Uh, I don't know whether it's spelled S-I-R or C-U-R. I don't know. Right, right. OK. I but... know that I'm, I, uh, I have to do good works. Do you? Have you, yes. have you done any...? Well, does... I'm going to try and buy you a tie to start with. <laughs> But, I mean, it must have been quite an exciting... I mean, it was an extremely exciting moment when you were it told. It was indeed. In fact, I'm still gasping you. Are you? Yeah. yeah and did you, what was it like at the palace? Did you think, my goodness... It's how... very nice, very nice. I wouldn't like to do the hoovering, though, but uh, <laughs> there's a lot of it. And uh, he was absolutely charming, Prince William, and uh, I said, just watch what you're doing with that thing, will you? <laughs> Remember, it goes that way, not that way. <laughs> And uh, I, was, I was highly tickled, yes, highly tickled to be recognised. And is it something... People some... point at me in the street and say, that's him, officer. <laughs> <laughs> Does it make you look back at your life and think, my goodness me, I'm a comic. Now, the How thing come is, I can... Tim, what you have to understand, it hasn't made any difference at all to Has me. Has it not? No. No, no, no I'm, I'm still wearing the same trousers, actually, to be honest with you. And, um, <laughs> today I'm wearing my lucky underpants, so... Uh, <laughs> No, but it, it, the difference it has made is to other people. I, I'm not used to ladies right. curtsying. And uh, can you do a curtsy there? Could you? Could you do me one up, please? Right, this is, here we go. <laughs> there we go. It's such a shame. It's didn't go very far down, did you? Did you say? <laughs> <laughs> I'd always help you up, don't worry. <laughs> No, I mean, it's, they seem a lovely audience. This illustrates very clearly your love of an audience. I love, I love an audience. I've been pro now since... Uh, well, I started doing shows when I was about 11 or 12. But it's a double act, you see. It's always, it's always been a double act for 60-odd years. There's you and there's me. Right. And it's a double act. And you have, to, you have to... You play an audience like you play a musical instrument. You know where the hot spots are. <laughs> you know where they, they, they need a little bit of coaxing. <laughs> You know when you can flirt. <laughs> no, you, you play an audience and you learn how to love an audience. And that's the thing, it is about love, isn't it? Because, oh, because you, you are in your 90th year, you're 90 in November, is that right? Why do you keep reminding me of that? Well, I, <laughs> I, I don't care how old I am here, I'm 18 to 21 here. In your head, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> The reason I say it is not, is not to remind, because you don't look the age... I'm, I'm digging myself a bigger hole here. <laughs> what I mean to say you is... You will get the tie, don't worry, I'll get the tie. <laughs> what I mean to say is that you, you must love it to keep doing it, because lots of people, dare we mention something like retirement, which I don't believe in retirement personally, but lots of people do retire, and if you'd retired, it would have been about 30 years ago. But you I must don't... love being in front of an audience. You love it. What the hell's he talking about? <laughs> <laughs> age! What age is it? doesn't matter unless you're a cheese. Of course. <laughs> age, age is only, it's only a thing, you know. What is it you love most about being in front of an audience? I love an audience. I love to see their... F I've got the best job in the world, because I only see people who are smiling. So, you like, want to come to some of my like gigs? A, <laughs> it's like a dentalist exhibition. <laughs> No, I only see smiling people, and that's, that's lovely. I, I love tickling them and uh, making... Actually, you don't make... You cannot make anybody laugh. Right. Laughter is inside everybody. It, they've all got... Obviously, this uh, crew... <laughs> very good chocolate muscles. This gentleman here is pretending he's on a jury, but he's not... <laughs> he's actually got a very good sense of humour, as his wife will tell you. <laughs> I, I read something that you said, and you'll have to tell me whether this is true or not. You said that you love being in front of an audience. You said it's a bit like a cross between being a vicar and a gladiator. But that's uh, a great description. So can you kind of unpack that for me? What does that mean exactly? You mean you feel like you're preaching well, uh, sort no, of? A vicar, a vicar uh, and a gladiator. Appeal, try to appeal to the spiritual side of a person. Yes. Uh, and to find out what they believe in or what they don't believe in. And what was the other one? A gladiator. Oh, a gladiator. You said this originally. Oh, that means you're going to fight like hell to get your laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> No, a gladiator. Glad he goes out there, and he uh, he looks at some of the contestants. Uh, <laughs> the ones, the ones that are laughing, are very nice. One, uh, lovely chuckle muscles, but he hasn't had a go yet. I've, <laughs> I've, I'm determined. I'm going to make him laugh. 
another quote that, that, uh, that I've got of yours, that, that, that refresh your memory on it, is that you once said, and this is quite appropriate today, although you're making them laugh a lot, but uh, uh, you once said that the audience that hasn't paid is the hardest to please. <laughs> a good idea if I interview you, you know. This. <laughs> I've got all your I answers. Mean, do, do, can you make a living doing this? No, I can't. <laughs> yes, yeah, well, I don't I suppose it's the wrong word to say. Some audiences are easy, some audiences are very, very warm and welcoming, and some audiences are uh, hard to please. <laughs> so this yeah, love... This... Some are, are, have a, a reputation. I played Glasgow Empire, the House of Terror. So many, because the reputation they had was that they hate English comedians. And that's, it's, it's wrong, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but I went to my first words to a, a Glasgow audience, I suppose you're all wondering why I've sent for you. <laughs> and a man on the third row uncoiled himself with half a bottle of whiskey in his head and he shouted at Cripe, he said, What a horrible sight! <laughs> And that was my first laugh, probably my only laugh. <laughs> but uh, I go back to Glasgow, we're going back again this year. You know, just for spite, probably. No, I... I... <laughs> when you're in these bigger venues that you play, I mean, in a place like this, we can see no, their faces. Do, no, no, you don't do bigger venues. They do these... Uh, do you do arenas? No, I couldn't sell oh, out an arena, no. No, no, no. I like to. I like an audience just like this now, just where you can get at them. <laughs> But the, uh, you, can, you, can, you can the tickle theater, their chuckle muscles and even bully them. <laughs> the theatres you play, Ken, do you have the lights up slightly so you can see their faces? No, then? no, you can usually see. I've got uh, good peepers. You can you see about uh, two or three rows back. You can hear. You can hear them muttering to each other saying, How old do you reckon you <laughs> Do you reckon that's a wig? <laughs> The Queen liked him. Really? Yes, and Prince Albert. <laughs> you uh, Actually, not to tell you'd know that you feed off an audience. Let's take you back to where it all started. Well, I'd have to take my trousers off. Huh? <laughs> it, it all started... In it Naughty all started one day when my dad had a, a bright idea. Well, it, as, <laughs> No, but Ken... I, I have a system. Now, you, you tell me. I have a funny little... I have a funny little idea. Now, you obviously can't remember. Nobody can remember being born, but you were born. Believe me. You, you, yes, sir. Yes, yes. Oh, it must have been a... a yeah. Must have been. Quite a surprise for your mother, because she was watching a film at the time. But when a baby pops out in, into her life for the first time, what are their first thoughts, their first words? Um, this man said, well, mine was a pop- I remember he said, I said, who switched that bloody light on? <laughs> I remember oh, the first thing say... my mum said to me when I, when I was born. She said, oh, I was expecting you. <laughs> Come on, that one. I have to tell you that, Jeremy. I have to tell you, this is Tim Vine, known as the Prince of Puns. <laughs> he loves puns. What's your favourite pun? I think probably uh, one-armed butlers. They can take it, but they can't dish it out. <laughs> But Ken, Ken, Ken I, I, I got it all from you. Though. This is the point. You will hit you in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> a pun is like a gateway. It's a gate to take from one idea to another idea. Um, because you do a lot of wordplay in your act. Not all puns. Though. No, but you, there's a lot of short jokes and a lot of. Well, I don't do all. When puns, I actually, first turned professional, I realised that radio comedy was a very, very important part of a jester's life. My first radio show was in 1954. Uh, workers' playtime from Barton Power Station in Eccles. Wow. And uh, I was so scared. Gosh, because they were live, you see. Live, you're going all over Britain. You play to as many as ooh, 25 people. So, <laughs> <laughs> but the man who was, was who really loved me to me was Charlie Chester. Do you remember Charlie Chester? Yeah. yeah. Stand easy. He was... He, no, that was his show. He was a lovely man and very, very kind and very, very uh, helpful. I stood outside the canteen where it was going to be done. He said, you all right, son? I said, no, no, God, I'm so frightened. He said, is that your script there? I said, yeah. He said, let me have a look at it. He said, God, he said, you've got a better script than I've got. Here, go on and do it. He was a lovely, lovely man. Awesome. In showbiz, you meet some really nice people. Yeah. People who want to uh, give a helping hand to anybody starting, even if you're just shoving you through the door. Yeah. It's, <laughs> now, now, you look, meet some lovely this, people, so, and uh, I'm working on you at the moment. <laughs> Your style, which, which is, um, I mean, uh, it's, it's, there's lots of short jokes. You do get on a roll with an audience. Are you analysing well. me? Yes, that's what I'm trying to do, yes. I'm sort of trying, I'm sort I'll of... get to work on you in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I'll it's... find out what makes you tick, mister. <laughs> Being forced to fill in the questionnaire. <laughs> 
That's what makes me tick. Um, <laughs> And that proved one thing I felt so long. The pun <laughs> is mightier than the suit. <laughs> no, but we are so... We, you're, you know, many years you've been doing your job now, so you know what that's, your that's style is. That's how old I am, yeah. <laughs> but you would have had to develop this style. Your first attempts at doing comedy in front of an audience, tell us about those. When you start wanting to be an entertainer, or a, particularly a comedian... And it was your you, father that first sort of inspired you in that direction, wasn't it? My father was a very, very humorous man, and he loved comedians, and he loved to laugh. But you have to start by saying who your heroes are. Mm. You know, you, you're a role model. Mm. And my, I've worked it out that I had several role models during the years. When I was a, a child, a boy, I was once... There's, <laughs> I, <laughs> I wasn't sure for a while, you know, because uh, I, my real name is, is, is Kenneth Tuesday Dodd. And, yes, uh, yeah, I agree, unusual. But when I was born, my father took one look at me and said to my mother, I think we better call it a day. <laughs> When you were growing up, and it's obviously a very happy family home that you're I had the most about. wonderful, happy family, a joyous childhood. My dad, Arthur, Arthur, loved to laugh and he loved comedians. He had his favourites, of course, and because he's your dad, you model yourself in your dad. His comedians were my comedians. So I worshipped people like uh, Will Hay and uh, Jimmy James. Uh, they were his uh, favourites, his real favourite when he was a young man. He uh, used to go and see a Yorkshireman from Bradford called Jack Pleasance. Now, Jack Pleasance, the name probably doesn't mean anything to you, but if you sing a song, this was his song. I'm shy, Mary Ellen, I'm shy. It does seem so naughty, oh my. Kissing and cuddling is nice, so they say. But how to do it, I don't know the way. And that, he was the shy comedian. But he also he had some marvellous, crazy... Surreal lines. One of his songs was, I know I'm a bad lad, I know I'm a bad lad, but it's my bath night, I've got to be washed. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> the song used to say all the daring things he was boasting about, all the daring things he could, he'd done in his life. He said, I've winked at a girl who was climbing on top of a bus and I've showed her me thumbs. Now, <laughs> I'm bit, we're talking... We're talking a hundred years ago. <laughs> How did people... Know? Why did they laugh at such zany things? <laughs> I've winked at a girl who was climbing on top of a bus and I've showed her me thumbs. Now, Sammy the Wrecker of Women is coming back home. The, <laughs> Jack Pleasant from Bradford. And in those days, of course, no microphones. They had to be character comedians. We idolised Arthur Askey because he was such a wonderful one of it. He had so much energy. It was like watching a firework display going off. Arthur Asker was a lovely, dynamic, clean comedian. Then in my teens, you know, you, you go a bit balmy then. So <laughs> I, I very lunatics then. Uh, I admired people like uh, Frankie Howard, uh, Max Wall, Danny Kay, people like that. Then when you get past 21, you look for uh, sophistication, polish, skill, Victor Borg. Yes. So, there, so you, you have role models. So when you first got on stage yourself... Well, who when would you I be? first went on, yeah. uh, Tim... Did you speak then? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I often used to say, who do you think you are? And I said, who, who am I going to be? Your first professional engagement was 1954, and you were 26 or 27 then? So, I'd, I'd done a couple of odd theatres before that, just one-nighters. So you'd done uh, quite a lot leading up to that? I played all the clubs, you know, but playing a nightclub in Ellesmere Port. Well, the only nightclubs I'd seen in those days, we're talking about 1945, uh, had been on, on, on set of films, you know? Busby Barclay, with a huge uh, nightclub set, a big six-foot-six showgirls swanning down a black marble staircase with huge ostrich feathers. So it came as a little bit of a surprise <laughs> when I walked into Flat Lane Labour Club <laughs> in Ellesmere Port and I saw a lot of little old men all wearing flat hats, all supping pints. <laughs> anyway, I did the show and they paid me four and six, you see. I was a professional. You mentioned films uh, in that uh, paragraph and... Uh, you... <laughs> Have you ever done any, have you done any films yourself? That was yourself? a chapter, not a paragraph. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you ever done any... Because it, you, you did, at one time, want to do films, didn't you? Do a comedy film? <laughs> is that right, Yes, Ken? Yes, I, yes, I right, have it? appeared in films. <laughs> uh, he rang me up one... Uh, in, in the, he rang me up, 
uh, the famous Shakespeare. I played Shakespeare, you know. Did you? Yeah, it was a draw. <laughs> and I, I, he rang me up, not Shakespeare, because he's, he's gone. The famous actor and producer, <laughs> Kenneth Albrand, he... <laughs> <laughs> Kenneth Albrand phoned me up and he said, Mr. Dunn, we want, want you to, I want to offer you a part in our new film of Hamlet. I said, well, I was, I was in that... No, no, he said, this is totally different. This, this is, we're doing a new version of Hamlet, Shakespeare's Hamlet, the Liverpool Hamlet, and we want you to be in it. Shall I do it for you now? <laughs> Why not? Say, uh, go on, Ken. <laughs> Say, go on, Ken. <laughs> to be or not to be, or what? <laughs> hey. you, know, you know what I mean, like... <laughs> yeah, so um, I was in the the, uh, the, the original the Hamlet. I, I did. I was Yorick, Yorick, the the court jester. Ah, yes, I know him well. <laughs> Where did you dig that one up? <laughs> you were born in Notty Ash here in Liverpool. Is is there a particular type of Liverpudlian humour? Liverpool people have a marvellous sense of humour. We need one, but it's... it's uh, <laughs> the Liverpool humour... And the Liverpool sense of humour is a peculiar thing, you know, a marvellous thing. Liverpool, the greatest port in the world, and over the years, people have come from all parts of the world, from Europe, from America, from South America, from all over... Scandinavia, sailors, and they brought with them their culture. They brought with them their... Most, they brought with them their religions, and they brought with them their, their, their uh, appetites, their food... Their meals. That's why we have a thing called scouse, which is really a Norwegian word, meaning uh, lobscouse is, is a stew. They brought with them their, their humour. They brought with them the, the things that they laugh at. So the Liverpool sense of humour is an amalgam of all sorts. It's Irish humour, Scottish humour, Welsh humour, English humour, European, Scandinavian, American. Yeah, it's a lovely, lovely stew, all mixed up, and it's a great sense of humour. The Liverpool people have one trait, which is, like most, most, like most of our psychological traits, they, they, they're usually uh, a two-edged sword. Yeah, they, they have a great disrespect. For <laughs> <laughs> they have a great disrespect for pomposity or, 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 or even uh, rules and regulations. <laughs> It would be a very brave man who walked down Dale Street with the top hat on. <laughs> would you have any uh, advice for fledgling comedians? Yes, don't. <laughs> yes. <laughs> advice, advice to young comedians. Is anybody wants to be a comedian? Put your hands up. Anybody wants to be a comedian? Well, I'll give you some advice, young man. Say, say, say after me now, I'm a comedian. I'm a comedian. You are, that's it. <laughs> that's your starting point. Now you've got to prove it. Now, and now you must never, never, ever lose that enthusiasm that you've got now. You're, you're bright-eyed and, uh, and bushy-tailed now. That's the way you beat. And you've got a lovely lady alongside you who will encourage you to do all sorts of funny things. <laughs> but never lose your enthusiasm. It's, it isn't, I'll tell you now, it isn't a nine-to-five job. No, no, it's a 25-hour job being a comedian. You've got to think it, think it, love it, sleep it, do it. Be a comedian. And I, I'm at the stage now of my uh, humorous activity. Yes. I would say <laughs> when I've become a philosopher, philosopher, I say to people, I say, particularly young people, I said, do not walk behind me, for I may not want to lead. Do not walk in front of me, for I may not want to follow. Do not walk alongside me. Just leave me alone with it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's philosophy. <laughs> W.C. Fields said, happiness, he said, happiness. Smile every morning. Get it over with. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not clever enough to be... A, I'm not clever enough to be a cynic. So when it comes to timing, do you think that's something you're born with? You've either got it or you haven't. Timing is a, is a, is a mysterious thing. If you want to learn time, timing, sometimes it's just getting out of the back door of the theatre before the audience have a time to get out of the door. <laughs> <laughs> if you really want to learn timing, listen to Frank Sinatra. Listen to Perry Como. Listen to any of those great vocalists and you see the way they caress a line. They see the way they, they lean on a, on a phrase. See the way they, they lift an emotion. Wonderful. And you are Look, a she's, man... She's with... gasping already. <laughs> yes. Oh, and... she's, she's lifting an emotion on you. <laughs> now, I can tell. You, you... <laughs> Ken, you mentioned... You mentioned singing there. You, of course, have a very lovely singing voice, and you've, and you've had... How many number one hits have you had? The musical part of my performance has always been very important, ladies and gentlemen, and the, uh, the, the singing, because 
Well, I come from a very musical family. Uh, my, my father played the saxophone, which, as you know, is an ill wind that nobody blows good. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> uh, and my mother had a lovely singing voice and played the piano. Uh, and I was, in, I was in the church choir till they found out where the, the noise was coming from. <laughs> uh, but I've always, loved, I've always loved music and I've always loved good, great songs. Did you used now, to sing at I home with started, a family? In a minute. Yeah. When, I, <laughs> when I first started in show business, all comedians used to finish with a uh, happy-go-lucky song. I want to be happy today. I feel so happy uh, when you're smiling, when you're smiling. And I, want, I always wanted to be different. But I wanted to finish my act on something more. And I, I always wrote oh, not nice songs. I was a great fan of Bing Crosby and uh, Arthur Tracy, the street singer. And uh, so I, uh, I used to finish with a, a ballad. And the first one I recorded, Love is Like a Violin, we got to number one. Exactly. And that's in 1962, that was in 60. A wonderful, wonderful song, which I still sing today, Happiness. And then on top of that, we had oh, all sorts of songs. Oh, in 1965, the, the two million seller with uh, Tears for Souvenirs. Yep. And then The River. I've, been very, I've, been, I've had about 25 songs in the top 20. And not, that's not bad for a comedian from Nossie Ash. It's very, very good. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> Now, when um, your material, um, you steady, steady. <laughs> you don't have talk about my, my my life history like this. <laughs> you have to test drive it somewhere. Is that not right? So, do you, is it... I used to do when I when I had a television series. I used to do what I call tryout shows, which I would take a lot of material along there and, and try them out. You know, where would you where would you try it out? I just got it well, like you've uh, got this uh, bunch of bed blockers. Uh, <laughs> 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 You, where, where you get them from, I don't know. I, I think they, they trip them up in the street outside, I think. <laughs> but like you get an audience who, who, who want to see how it's done, uh, I, I asked various people, could I come and try some material out on you? Have you done it? I, I heard that, because I thought it was a very good idea, this. I heard that you've gone to old people's homes and just and set up and do a bit. Why, Is that right? Why, why did you say old people's homes? <laughs> Have you ever been in an old person's home? Yes, my parents. You will. <laughs> No, there may be people in this audience who have had this said to them, we're going to put you in a home. Don't fight it, don't argue. Just go and say, oh, yes, very nice, yes, yeah. Yeah, because some of these old people's homes have lovely places. Everything's done for you, all the bread's ready chewed. <laughs> they, uh, you, can, you can have a different set of teeth every day if you want to. <laughs> no, they. Uh, but is that true? Is that that you. That old, you older people have a wonderful, wonderful sense of humour. And mm. why not? Because they've, they've known that life is full of ups and downs. The, the road of life has got a lot of speed bumps in it. And you've got to get over them. And you, uh, the best way to uh, settle a problem is to laugh at it. Because you're known for having a show that, <laughs> that uh, lasts, um, well, you, you, as you say, giving people their money's worth in terms of uh, times. Because it's now almost a are kind of... Are you having of, a go at me? Not at all. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. When, I, you, come to, when you come to me, see my, I do not... I, let no, me say, I like it. Let me say categorically, or even dogagorically, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> let me say it right now. I do not do long shows. I give good value. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Um, we're now going to record some of this. Um, <laughs> you can't, Timothy, you can't frighten me. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, um, I, uh, 1990 was when I first began my attempts at stand-up comedy. It's the same year I saw you at the London Palladium, and I think there was probably a connection there. You are a, a comedy hero of mine, and thank you very much for letting me listen to you to, uh, <laughs> today. So, uh, the past, present, yes. and future. Now, well, we what haven't is, touched what much your, on the future, have we? What is your future? Well, I don't know. I'm, do I'm hoping to get out of here eventually. But uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> do, you, do you feel that you've made an impression today? <laughs> <laughs> you've been a marvellous straight man. <laughs> We call that, in showbiz terms, we call them a feed. I haven't done much but feeding. You, you, you've, been, you've been a good feed. I, I can feel the indigestion coming out. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so, you, you, the future, people say to me, what about all this um, thing you see on telly now? You know, a lot of them, you can't really, you know, it makes you squirm a bit. I said, well, that's what they want. If that's what they want, that's what they get. I don't know who said that people 
like that kind of... Uh, see, there's a rainbow of laughter. Light at the very top, there's pure white laughter, uh, like children who leap about just for the sheer joy of being alive. Then you go through the spectrum of yellow, red laughter, the laughter of love and passion. And <laughs> right at the bottom, there's the dark colours of satire, cynicism and obscenity. And, uh, you know, they'll have to try and work it out. I was in our house about four hours ago in, in our front room and I, I was watching the telly uh, in the and my auntie and uncle were in the city here and suddenly there came this explicit sex scene. Oh, I wouldn't... No, I wouldn't soil your mind. This, this explicit... This, the lot, everything. I took no... I just carried on watching the news and let her get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> but, been a lovely, wonderful audience. I think during this time, with my, with right, my assistant it. here, we, we, <laughs> we have proved that laughter is very, very good for you. The lady, I'm now going to wrap up. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> ladies and Are gentlemen. Are you a puzzle? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's all in the delivery. <laughs> I don't know what noise that was. <laughs> Return to sender. <laughs> oh, we need to stamp this out now, don't we? This is uh... extra to pay. <laughs> we'll address this later. <laughs> um, listen, um, Ken Dodd, you are a hero of mine and an inspiration, and uh, may you long continue to make people laugh. Ladies and gentlemen, Sir Ken Dodd! Chain Reaction with me, Tim Vine, and my guest, Sir Ken Dot. The producer was Adnan Ahmed, and it was a BBC Studios production. Not enough more. <laughs> <laughs>